So all this is useless. Not only is it useless wood and cherry log, it actually degrades your final lumber. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's cold out here. I hate sawing in the cold. That's why I live in the south. So, had people ask questions about how to saw up cherry logs. There is definitely a technique to sawing them that is not obvious. And it maximizes the good wood, although it looks like it wastes a lot of wood. and cherry and walnut typically run on a sawmill using a different technique than most other wood simply because it's a high sapwood wood and sapwood on cherry and walnut pulls causes degrade in the wood if you're trying to saw high-end wood you don't want self-imposed degrade uh, also you have issues with pith so between the pith and the sapwood, you can either produce a lot of really nice wood or you can produce a lot of not so really nice wood. So I'll show you how we do it. First, we got to get everything ready. It's kind of a multitasked weekend. So we've got things we have to do to get ready for sawing. And first is I need to take the claw off of Old Blue. Now here's a little trick. If you've ever had an attachment with hydraulic coupling, you know what a total pain in the rear end it is. Pressures in the cylinders heat up, they cool down. You can't get the connectors to connect to your tractor or your front end loader or your skid steer. And that's because one cylinder may have, one side of the cylinder may or may not have pressure, equal pressure on it. So, so what you do is pretty straightforward. You take the two connectors of the implement, put them together like so. Now, the fluid can flow in a complete circuit and you will never have issues with trying to get stubborn implement hydraulic connectors on anymore. What you doing, boy? He's doing a no-no. You never walk under front end loader arms. But he's a dog, so I guess he's smarter than we are. Now we got to get everything ready for sawing. It's getting stuck. Let's see if we can get out of here. We'll take a run at it. Come on, baby. Oh, I got it. Come on. There we go. I mean, look at that. Barely even marked up the grass. Sippy's already gone to sleep. Stickers are properly placed. So I like to use this quality time while I'm filling up my sawmill with diesel to look things over. See if there's anything broken or a belt that's loose or a wire that's hanging or something. Make sure my fuel filters look clean. They do. Make sure everything else looks okay and does. And then use my patented diesel can cover. Got to keep the sawdust out of the diesel can, all right? Patented.
perfect fit. Somebody left a log here for me to saw. Oh well. All right, let's talk about logs here. This is a cherry log. There are two species that I use a slightly different sawing technique on when I'm sawing, and that is cherry and walnut. Best way to describe it is you saw them like you're sawing a donut. I mean, you know, a powdered donut, a donut you eat. The donut you're not supposed to eat, but you do anyway. The reason you do that is because there's a tremendous amount of sapwood on cherry and walnut. And there's also split prone wood in the center called juvenile wood or pith. Some species, you don't hardly know it's there. Some species like cherry, it's very prevalent. It's useless in a board. It will always cause cracks, splits, twists, warps, all kinds of things that you just do not want in a log and you just don't want it in your lumber. Let's look at this log and explain to you what I mean by we saw it up like a donut. Even though the NHLA standards allow a certain percentage of sap, I prefer to have zero sapwood on my boards because sapwood is not your friend. It will dry at a different ratio. So basically if you have a board with sapwood on the edge, it's going to try to pull. So imagine this being a rubber band. It shrinks more than this when it dries. So it's going to have a tendency to pull the board either off its edge or bow it or curve it or something. So in short, sapwood, bad. Let's just show how much sapwood on that cherry log. So all this is useless, not only is it useless wood and cherry log, it actually degrades your final lumber. All right, now let's go look on the inside. So this is the axis of the log right here where the center is. And right here you can see this slightly darkened ring. Normally that's called the pith or juvenile wood. This wood right here is of a different structure than this wood. It's weaker. It will dry at a different rate. It's not good in cherry. So this gets discarded. You're left with this much. This is what you're gonna saw. This is what I'm gonna saw the wood from. It looks like a donut. Edge right there, hole in the middle. Thing is, I'm not sawing any of the undesirable wood and I'm not putting it into my lumber. I like to saw with a six inch opening face. Typically that means six inches of heartwood on one face for cherry. So at this point, I'm taking the outer sapwood off. I'm taking a pretty deep cut, trying to get a six inch face in the heartwood. So watch how easy it is and how few steps it takes for me to get this slab unloaded off the outfeed table onto the roller table and then the forks. Letting gravity do the work. Another opening face, 180 degrees to the other side. I'm already in pattern mode at this point. Better to take a bunch of one and one eighth inch thick four quarter boards off. The idea at this point is to peel the sapwood off much like peeling a carrot. I'm going to go through all four faces and I want to keep the pith centered. Since I've already got this face developed and flat and I'm in the hardwood mostly, I'm going to take a couple of boards and edge them on the sawmill. Notice I'm unloading these guys without moving. This is one of the advantages of a hydraulic sawmill. I'm 
I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Notice I'll take the initial slab off, then I'll take a couple flitches. The idea is to keep the pith centered as I go around the camp. If you can't do this reverse flip move on your hydraulic sawmill, you need to practice it. You use this one a lot. Now I'm going to go from the top of this cant and try to get the pith recentered on this edge. You can see how low the pith is on this cant, so this gives me an opportunity to take a bunch of four quarter boards all the way down until I've got everything recentered. Notice how I'm rotating everything to stay out of the pith. That is a no fly zone. But I am taking the best boards that the cant has to offer. Notice how effective those shoes that I invented are or the drag back system, being able to lay boards right back on top of the previously cut boards. If you don't have a drag back and you don't have shoes on it, you are suffering. So notice on this particular log and then on this cant, how I take a few boards off, I rotate, take a few boards off, rotate, take a few boards off. The whole idea is to reduce the stress of the boards coming off, is to identify the stress Ooh, look at this. Here's my uh, drag back, my B train working. You gotta love that. Uh, I can cut so much wood and not have to handle it. It's ridiculous. But anyway, you can see how after making those cuts, how I'm rotating again, and how the pith is staying centered within a few boards. And then I'll make another cut, and I'll rotate, and I'll recenter. Now we're getting down into the short row boards. It's kind of hard to figure out exactly where I want to be taking my next boards off, so I'm rotating things around and taking a look at the faces. And you can tell I've decided to take it on this particular face. It had the fewest number of defects, so that board is coming off. not too hard to figure out where to take the boards that I have left. The pith is in the center, the heartwood is almost gone, so I take off the top and the bottom, and when I get done, I'm just gonna saw through the whole cant, simply because there's no other movements for me to make, and it's just as quick for me to blow through these boards, as opposed to rotating and taking off the tops and the bottom. I'll inspect the boards when they come off and I'll discard the ones where the pith cracks are too big. This is just faster than sawing and flipping, resetting and sawing. You have to stay flexible in your sawing techniques based on the cant, the position of the boards, and the moon phase. This isn't slicing bread, this is milling high-grade lumber. I normally do not edge on a sawmill except in certain circumstances, this being one of them. I mean, I've got an edger and I've got a straight line rip saw. However, you've got to be able to learn how to edge on a sawmill without touching the boards. Uh, with a hydraulic system, it takes some practice, but you gotta, you gotta work on it. I see so many other people on these YouTube channels wasting so much time handling flitches while they're trying to edge that you just can't do that. It's too slow. You've got to be able to do it with a minimum amount of hand touch. You've got to be able to manipulate your hydraulics and you've got to whip those boards off the mill because the reality is we're trying to run a business here. We're not trying to tickle the wood. We're trying to cut the wood. 
This is going to be hard to see, but notice I'm throwing these edgings. As I throw them, I give them a twist on the back end so they end up landing horizontally on the forklift forks. So I can either throw it and be done with it or waste a lot of time walking around everything and stacking this scrap on the forklifts. Just learn how to throw wood. You'll save a lot of time and a lot of effort. And it's kind of fun. Notice how I was able to throw these edgings where they land perfectly aligned on the pack of waste wood. When I'm edging, I am not flipping individual boards. I'm using techniques to flip and rotate the entire packs of wood at once. If you watch and re-watch these videos, you'll see techniques in here that you don't normally see in other videos. These techniques take a lot of practice, but save a tremendous amount of time. If you can't do them, you ought to work on them. It's gorgeous wood. You can see the sun shining on it right there on that edge. See what the rest of it looks like. It's gorgeous cherry. It's got a lot of curl to it. That's what that was, a curly cherry log. I'm happy with it. Well, folks, that's it for this log. I've still got a mess more to saw. This filming really slows things down to a crawl and a half. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you will subscribe, I would appreciate it. If you will hit the little like button, whether you like it or not, just hit the button. I appreciate it. I don't get any sponsorships on these videos. I don't get nothing for these videos, basically. Let me know if somebody's watching this. I do appreciate any comments. I try to answer them. Y'all have a good day. I've got some more sawing to do.